Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Kaba Ilko, part number 45-1-3-04-26D-0. That is a really contorted part number to mean it's a deadbolt. Um, that part number is really long because you can, because there are so many options uh, and columns in which you can insert the information that you want. So it does build a large part number, but this is indeed my favorite. This is probably my favorite deadbolt. Um, if I had to pick one favorite deadbolt that wasn't the best in any one category, it would be this lock because of its highly modular nature uh, and a and a trait that no other lock has that this shares. So first of all, this is a deadbolt. When I say modular, it comes in pieces and some of those pieces can be swapped out. This lock was ordered less mortise cylinder from the client, which actually uh, serves as illustration uh, why I'm partial to it. Um, why wouldn't you need a cylinder for a deadbolt? Well, of course you will. You'll need at least one, uh, maybe two. But why doesn't this client? Probably because he's using his own cylinder. Uh, very likely because he's using a cylinder that is high security. Uh, he might have a high security cylinder from maybe names you've never heard. Abloy, Dom, um, he, uh, Fiché. Uh, he could have a requirement for a high security cylinder that the manufacturer of that cylinder doesn't provide as a deadbolt. Um, that would, in terms of it being an American style deadbolt, but you can order a mortise cylinder. And here's a, while it's extremely obtuse um, example, it does illustrate my point. This is a mortise cylinder, okay? This, uh, this mortise cylinder will thread into this body. This is a mortise cylinder that I want to use. Why do I want to use this? Well, this is a Brahma cylinder. That is a radial style key. And why would I want to use this? Because I'm pretty sure that you're not going to get this key cut down at the local, uh, at the local, uh, you know, big box home improvement store. Um, so you can order just regular garden variety Cabo Ilco cylinders, high quality cylinders, or you can take it to an extreme of intentionally purchasing this lock less deadbolt because you want to do something really unusual in it. I could take out my Abloy cylinder, which is a disc wafer type cylinder that actually is much more akin to what a bank or vault door would work on. I could use my Asa uh, cylinder. I could use a um, Mhart cylinder. These are uh, Primus. Um, any other manufacturer cylinder who has a particular keyway that you want to preserve um, you can do that, okay? So while I, do, I, you know, I don't necessarily plan to use my Brahma cylinder uh, in an application for a deadbolt, but I could, okay? I know that when I get that key back, no one's copied it, okay? <laughs> so, so there you go. That would, that's the illustration of why I like this modular system. It's going to come with a bolt, obviously. Uh, this is certainly not going to be uh, what I would argue would be a uh, the, the heaviest grade or most durable bolt in the world. It will meet your criteria of it being grade one and a one inch throw, etc. There are features of high security deadbolts like Multilock, who I believe is an Israeli company who has, when I've spoken to locksmiths, they agree that that's probably their favorite lock because in the bolt it has a couple of ball bearings that when you throw it, those ball bearings stick out. And when it's captured in the strike, you now can't spread that out. Um, and it is a very uh, unusual key as well. But this, this Kaba lock may fit uh, somewhere in your requirements. So we're going to do a visual tour of the parts. We're going to look at the supporting documentation. We're going to look at um, how to purchase this lock and what all of the columns of part number means. Uh, and let's start uh, now with this. I'm going to pull up the installation instructions on my screen because I don't remember the technical term that they call all of these. When I say the hub, they call this the cylinder housing. Okay, The cylinder housing is going to 
uh, be installed like this because our because our latch bolt fits through this chassis. Okay, like this. So what happens is you need to drill the hole in the door. The cylinder housing com com comes into the hole. Then you bring your latch bolt. Okay. Now what makes this work is a mortise cylinder with a typical cam. And Adam's right cam will work or the lorry fantail cam will work. And as you throw the cylinder, it's obviously going to kick that bolt in and out. Okay. So it's a simple system to use and work. And that's how it starts out as. Now this client ordered a 2 and 3 eighths latch bolt. And we're going to get to a hallmark of another reason that I absolutely love this deadbolt when we get to dissecting the part number. And that's where it's going to start out at. You'll have uh, actually, I believe I've done that in, no, 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 I've done it correctly. We're good. Right. Okay. So the cylinder housing goes in, the latch bolt goes in. Then you would bring your mortise cylinders or cylinder. Obviously, I demonstrated how that cylinder would thread into that typical 1 and 5 30 second, 32 threads per inch uh, thread type, what is known as ultra fine. Uh, after that, we're going to have uh, here on our desk, this is a single cylinder. On the outside, it's going to have your heavy cylinder collar, a trim ring. And then you're going to provide your mortise cylinder with this. The diameter of that outside trim ring, about two and a half, has a total projection of about nine sixteenths. We're about three eighths of an inch from the face of the cylinder to the ledge where the collar sits. And that dimension alone, you know, about 3 sixteenths. And that's important because at a certain point you need to figure out, okay, what length cylinder do I want uh, for this? Okay, so that's important. You're going to then get, this is a single cylinder, you'll get your inside thumb turn, which is here. And all of that gets put together, that gets put assembled down through this. You're going to have your thumb turn, your tailpiece, and your retaining C-clip ring that will go here as you move this, obviously, into your hardware. You're going to hold that C-clip on the back side after your tailpiece is installed. And let's just quickly demonstrate that. Another reason I love this unit is because I did a job for a client who needed a deadbolt quickly. Okay, great, no problem. It, okay, it's got to be double cylinder. Okay, that's no problem. I needed an oil rub bronze. Okay, that's no problem. I need a two and three eighths back set. Fine, that's easy. It's a three and a half inch thick door. So what's great about this lock is you can just simply buy longer cylinders. And generally, you can get longer cylinder. You can certainly get longer cylinders, inch and a half, inch and three, inch and five eighths, inch and three quarter, two inch, two and a quarter. You can get those from stock. Now they may not be Kaba Ilko, but they will be those cylinders, and you can make that happen from stock. That's another reason that I love this model. Okay, now into that thumb turn discussion. You'll bring your you'll bring your thumb turn, and that just pressure fits right down in there, and it makes a really nice, uh, you know, smooth-looking sort of operation. Okay, just works really well. Then your tailpiece is going to come in just as I've done. And then, of course, your C-ring. That's going to fit right in the very bottom base there. And you're going to need a tool to get that in, but that's going to go right in and hold all that together. Okay? Nice quality item. Um, and by the way, what we did on that double cylinder, uh, actually, 
what the client actually recall, uh, if I recall correctly, he didn't want a double cylinder, he wanted a single cylinder. So what we were able to do was, and the lock, and that's the other thing that's nice, uh, he was centering the lock in the door. Obviously, when you have a modular system, you don't have to center the lock in your door anymore. You can put it, you can place that wherever you would like. Um, why would you do that? Well, because you've got, I had a client who was building a, a door to an acoustically rated room. It wasn't acoustically rated. He, it was a theater room, and they were building it out of components themselves. So they took a couple of inch and three-quarter thick doors and glued them together, a sheet of plywood on the outside, et cetera, et cetera. And they were installing it, and they stepped the, install, the uh, construction of that so that when the door closed, it literally overlapped the, the corresponding framing in that stepped pattern. Well, they were installing it into the smallest portion of that. So we could do a standard cylinder on one side and then a super long cylinder on the other side. It was a, if you're doing an unequal installation, you may need to do, if you want a single cylinder, you might just need to do a mortised thumb turn. That's indeed what we did there. The problem there is we had to purchase an extra cylinder collar, but you can order that item separately. It's not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, or in fact, well, you do need to use these cylinder collars or something that uh, mimics that. And, and what I mean is the one thing that I don't love about this system is the one thing that I don't love about the system is the minimum hole diameter is inch and seven eighths. I would really, really love it if they could get this to fit into an inch and a half hole. There is no way to make that happen that I can see. Um, so that would be the one thing that I, I, I wish was different on this lock. So we've demonstrated the thumb turn. We've got the two screws for the thumb turn. And those are going to go, obviously, through the escutcheon, through the cast metal body. They're going to thread, obviously, into these two tapped holes in what is the cylinder housing. Okay. Now, you're going to get a strike plate. That's going to be that, that appears to be a two and a quarter inch tall strike. That's, I don't like that. Yeah, it's a two and a quarter inch. Oh, forgive me. That's the face plate of the latch bolt. Uh, that is the face plate of the latch bolt, two and a quarter it's going to be one inch wide. It's going to fit right over our faceplate. The strike plate, of course, they do make deadbolt strikes that are um, two and a quarter tall. I, for a moment, thought this was a two and a quarter strike. Uh, I should have known better. This is, of course, a high quality strike from Kava Ilko. You have your backing plate and you have your two and three quarter tall strike. That'll be two and three quarter by inch and an eighth, two and three quarter, inch and an eighth, obviously a satin chrome type finish. Now this plate, as you can see here, has four holes pierced in it. That's because you're going to get four screws, two short ones and two long ones. Uh, now we have to be very careful where we install those. And let's switch to the, let us switch to our, um, screen view to take a look at where those are going to be installed. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at here. Okay, and we were going to talk about those screws and where they go. So, let's say that this is your frame. Rabbited exterior frame. Here's your door. Now, typical construction, as you as you know, is going to have some sort of a stud or reinforcing behind the frame, and and, and correct construction should have double studs behind a, uh, a a doorway. Well, that strike is going to sit, you know, basically right in here, correct? And if you recall, we had two screws that were in the center, but then we had two screws that were biased towards the outside. Uh, of that plate. You could install it so that those screws are biased here or biased here. Okay, You're obviously going to want to run those long screws in this location because you'll be able to sink those long screws into your studs. You put it over here, it's going to miss them. So they go down here where you're going to hit a stud and the length of that screw is 3 inch. Okay, So you're going to get through your one-by material, whatever whatever has been done here, 
into your stud that's back here and that's how you install those. You will absolutely want to pre-drill that hole. The last thing you want to do is compromise and split your frame. It certainly does you no disservice uh, by splitting the frame unintentionally because it wasn't pre-drilled properly. And a pre-drill hole would be some percentage of the root diameter. Uh, let's switch back to the camera view and we can talk about that. Okay, so the root diameter of this screw is the part is the body of the screw. It doesn't include the threads. And I was always taught, I was taught originally in my career that you're just going to pre-drill that hole with the root diameter, which is 0 0.141. But that definition's evolved a little bit, or I have been better educated, I suppose. The root diameter is maybe 75% or maybe 85% or 72% and 82% of the root diameter. It will be a uh, smaller hole if you have a soft wood. If you have a hard wood, go with the 82-85% of that. So 85% of 0.14, you can do the math, uh, whatever that is. 0.1, I think I said 0.14, let's just go with that, times 0.85, so you're going to be looking at a hole that's 0.119 in diameter. A wire drill uh, set is the best because you'll get, you, you won't be relegated to fractional increments, you'll get a much finer increment when you get a larger set, so you can really pre-drill that uh, very nicely, and don't, you know, your actual mileage will vary if you follow my meaning. That would be where I would start. Uh, you'll want a very well-fitting bit. You're going to want a six-inch aircraft uh, length uh, drill bit so you can get that drilled really properly. And once you start the process with that proper fitting bit, be confident and run that thing all the way in. I don't run it all the way in. I get it to a couple of turns to finish and then I run the other screw in. Uh, and it has to be pre-drilled. So that covers the conversation on the strike, and there that is again. Your two small screws and your two larger screws. That doesn't go there. Your two larger screws go there. And of course your strike plate will go in. Okay, Very nice, very durable. You can of course get security strikes. You know, uh, we sell you know, uh, very heavily uh, armored or manufactured of steel strikes if you really want to upgrade that entire scenario, if you feel that's necessary. Some people do. Some people will do it after they've had a problem, or some people will do it from the uh, initial construction because they expect to have vandalism or an attempt at break-in uh, on, uh, on their project. Um, the faceplate we've talked about. Now we've got another package here we need to we need to discuss. This is going to have the the Allen wrench and some other goodies in it. Um, so starting with the things that I know, there are two wave washers. A wave washer is intended to sit inside of your collar like this. So that when you tighten your cylinder, you can get it to where you want the key, vertical, to the point where it's not actually bottoming out to the bottom of that collar. Because that spring, that wave washer, and if you use your imagination, you can see why we call it a wave washer. It will flatten and compress to keep this tight on the door. <clears throat> You're going to get the Allen wrench. You need the Allen wrench because the cylinder housing goes in, the latch bolt goes in. There are... Uh, there is a screw here and a, a set screw here and here. You will then, when you get the cylinders threaded in, insert your Allen wrench through this access hole all the way down to that set screw. And I've, I've got it seated there, and as I rotate it, it comes in and out. Okay, That's how you tighten your mortise cylinders. Um, there, there are two trim head machine screws inside of here. <clears throat> I'd prefer not to cheat and look at the installation instructions. What that will certainly be is going to be screws that will be run through the cylinder housing into the holes prepped in the latch bolt to prevent that latch bolt 
from obviously being forced out of the edge of the door. That's what that's got to be for. Let's look at the installation instructions and confirm my memory is correct. Yeah, that is what it is. Cylinder housing screws, and they'll fit. Um, you're going to obviously install those before you bring your mortise cylinders or your thumb turn. The last package that we have in here are these two discs. Okay, What are those for? They're mostly never installed, but Kaba Ilko supplies them. On the back of your mortise cylinder, okay, let's start over. If you think of your mortise cylinder, or any cylinder, most cylinders, you can, if you took a cylinder and looked at it, you'd be able to look all the way down through the broaching and the cylinder plug, all the way through to the back side and out of that cylinder. Okay. Kaba Ilko being a company that is a long lineage of locksmithing and cylinder related products has certainly revealed or thought about or became aware of a bypass to their deadbolt. Imagine when that cylinder is installed. It is theoretically possible that someone could insert a specialized tool down through the broaching of the cylinder and get to where they can manipulate the portion of the latch bolt. Okay, try to do it on camera. They can get a tool in there and manipulate the latch bolt down through the broaching. So you install these plates onto the back. You remove the two screws. Oh, I've given myself a cut. You've removed the two screws on the back of the cam to the um, mortise cylinder. Put this plate on, then put the screws back down, and that will prevent someone from breaching through there and using a specialized tool to manipulate uh, your lock. So you'll definitely want to have those installed. There are two. You would only need one for this cylinder um, because it is a single cylinder, but they'll certainly put two in there in case you go with a... Uh, it's probably the same hardware package for single or double cylinder deadbolts is, I guess, what I'm driving at. So that... Uh, and then you'll get a trim ring. Uh, I think I probably showed that initially. Now, let's take a look at the supporting documentation because I have indeed exhausted all of the parts in our, our unit. Okay, great. So let's switch back to, as I move my parts to where they belong on the table, let's switch back to the screen view and take a look at the supporting documentation together. Okay, in this part of the video, we're going to discuss the supporting documentation. Before we get to that, extended description. Satin chrome is the finish. That's this part of the part number, which we're going to dissect. It's a single cylinder, 2 and 3 eighths back set, 1 inch front on the standard bolt with a heavy duty strike. No cylinder. This will work on inch and 3 eighths, inch and 3 quarter thick doors. Um, and they say that because you do have that inside thumb turn. That tailpiece is only so long. Inch and seven eighths diameter minimum up to two and an eighth inch holes. Two and an eighth being the standard size. Solid brass. Um, the only thing that they could be referring to there is the scalp plate on the thumb turn, and then any cylinders from Kaba that you would install. I'm not sure what else is solid brass here. One inch bolt throw, and will operate with an Adams Wright cam but it will operate also with a, I want to show you the other cam. It's a Lori Fantail cam. This is the one that I like to use, the 863R, because you get a better movement. Because that tailpiece is so much wider, you get engagement of the bolt immediately and thoroughly thrown um, because that tailpiece is so much larger. That's the one I like to use. And that's indeed what this is for. Uh, it's for this deadbolt. Although an Adams Wright cam will uh, also work is what they're driving at. Okay. Now <clears throat> supporting documentation, installation instructions, everything that's here is indeed included with your is indeed included with your um, with your hardware. This is just a scan of that paperwork. So what we have here are um, 
installation instructions. And what we grazed on very quickly was the timing of the tailpiece on the uh, thumb turn. So you need to time that correctly based on the swing of your door. Okay, so be sure that you're placing it in the proper location. The lever at the correct location, put lever through the central hole of rows, okay. Find the horizontal slot in the lever, and there you go. Okay, so all that you're really doing is orienting your thumb turn in the proper location, and then installing your tailpiece horizontally, and then uh, obviously your C-clip. So you can install it you know, in any direction that you really want, as long as the tailpiece is horizontal. Uh, when the bolt is retracted, I don't see where they're telling us, the bolt needs to be retracted when you assemble it. But as long as you assemble it in this orientation, it will become logical uh, to you of how you end up throwing the bolt. Okay, so this would be showing the unit in the unlocked position on a right-hand door. Let's illustrate that. We have a right-hand door. Okay. And I, I'm realizing now that the way that they are asking that you put this together, they're not clarifying to us whether or not our bolt is retracted or projected. I would only think it's going to be certainly in the retracted position because of the horizontal nature of the tailpiece. But let's, let's switch back to the camera view because I'd like to illustrate this important point. So here's the important point. They're basically saying the way that you're looking at the installation instructions for a right-hand door, you should be thrown this way, okay? And that your tailpiece needs to go in horizontally. And then, of course, we'd put our C-clip. Well, I'm going to assemble this for a right-hand door with my bolt retracted. This would be the inside. My tailpiece has to go in, and I'm in the right location. The problem is when I throw this, I'm throwing it like this to show it in the locked position. Now, if you like your thumb piece showing you this orientation for unlocked and this orientation for locked, well, then you're, 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 in, good, you're in business. That's just what it's going to look like, okay? I would prefer not to do it that way. What I would prefer to have is my my tail my uh, turn knob in the opposite direction. Put my put my tailpiece in so that it's horizontal. I don't have that C clip, so the tailpiece just flops around. Put it in the opposite way from what I understand that as they're showing it. Then. Here, here's the point. When this is away from the strike, it's unlocked. When you when it's towards the when it's towards the lock edge of the door, it's locked. That to me is logical. So I can look across the room and say that door is unlocked, that door is locked. Okay, that's how I would want to do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but I thought it was important to illustrate that point. Um, you know, to each his own. The point is is that it will the lock will certainly operate in either um, condition without any trouble whatsoever. Let's jump back to the screen view. Okay, so we have certainly illustrated how we're going to contend with that. Proceed accordingly. The bottom line is if you don't like where the thumb turn is when you're locked and unlocked, simply reverse it. Flip it to the other side. You know, remove the two screws, flip it to the other side, relocate your uh, tail piece, and you're going to be just, just as right as rain. So the, this yellow paperwork is indeed included, and all that there are all the differences is single cylinder and then double cylinder. Okay, let's just look at double cylinder. Uh, well, now let's look at single cylinder. 
uh, marking the holes. Now there is a template included with this uh, and there is a link below this video to the template. Okay, two and three eighths uh, is what this is. So in step one, mark the holes. You're saying just make a two and an eighth inch hole, even though you can go as small as inch and seven eighths. I would prefer the smallest hole possible. Um, does a quarter inch matter? I would probably argue that it doesn't. I would personally drill the smallest hole possible. And because you have a template that's here that you will have a fold over, um, you know, feature to the paper template. Uh, the only thing to probably, well, let's take a look. Using the enclosed template, mark hole is illustrated. You're going to do a, you're going to mark your hole in the edge and then in the center of the door. You're first going to drill your hole, your crossbore hole through the door. Then you will drill your one inch hole from the edge of the door into that crossbore. But then you're going to over drill it into the back of the cavity ever so slightly, maybe a quarter inch. I like to use a typical, very inexpensive. Uh, very typical and common fly bit, paddle style bit, butterfly bit, whatever you call it, just a cheap fly bit. I like the ones with the outside scoring cutters. Um, Bosch makes those. We're a distributor of Bosch um, because I think you get a nice clean prep in the edge. Then you're going to mortise your uh, two and a quarter by, by uh, one inch wide faceplate out here, 532nd of an inch deep. The cylinder housing goes in, your, la your latch bolt goes in, your two cylinder housing screws to hold the latch bolt go in. It, there is a part of this that is marked top on the latch bolt. Um, you'll, the edge of the cylinder housing the bottom line is the <clears throat> Porsche, the pin that articulates so that you can throw and retract the latch, that goes towards the bottom. There's only one way that it will fit into the cylinder housing because of a T slot preparation in the bottom of the cylinder housing. So it will only go in one way. Then study that before you put it in the door to save you the trouble of having to remove it. Now you'll bring your cylinder and your trim, single or double cylinder. They're saying that you can use the key here as a handle by pulling it out one notch. That is not a bad thing to do. I certainly do that. You want to be very careful when you thread the cylinder into the cylinder housing because it is a very fine thread, 32 threads per inch. And 32 threads per inch is by design. Such a very fine thread is used in hardware because you'll have lots of the greatest amount of surface area of the pieces that you have threaded together to give you the most robust uh, a, a level of durability when it comes to it being used, touched, manipulated, worked, cycled. If you had less threads per inch, it's less of a dependable installation. You'll make sure that your cylinder is in the correct orientation and that your key operates the latch bolt comfortably. Then in step seven, run that Allen wrench in and tighten the screws. And then your thumb turn will go on. Be sure to... Um, Get that threaded in loosely, check for operation, and once you're satisfied it works to your requirements, then complete the tightening of the screws. Then, of course, chiseling for your strike would be next. <clears throat> okay, you do need to have the um, center line of your lock body and the center line of your strike being the same. So depending on the dimension from the face of the door to the face of the stop, what this dimension is, you could take your door thickness, divide that by half, add this dimension, then that's where you'll center the strike from the face of the stop to here is how you can go about doing that. Okay. The double cylinder uh, installation instructions is is basically step six one more time uh, is all that is. Step six takes the place of that. You'll obviously get your faceplate installed. And then those thumb turn assembly installation instructions. 
The template uh, is not currently linked here, but by the time you see this document, you will certainly, um, this video, it'll, it will be uploaded, okay? Now, let's take a deeper dive, link to the manufacturer's page here. If you click on that and then pull up the brass cylinder manual, that's going to allow us to review this deadbolt. Now that catalog, that brass cylinder manual is handy because it will give you an overview of the Kaba line. But let's skip right to our deadbolt. And they put that right up in the front. And in a prior catalog, they do a better job with giving us some images of the material, which I'm going to use this document. It's all the same. Single cylinder, uh, pardon me, double cylinder, single cylinder, showing that um, thumb turn on the inside. Cylinder options, no cylinder, ADA thumb turn, thumb turn, captive thumb turn where you can insert a key into the thumb turn, but then you can use a special key to pull that key out, and now it's a double cylinder. Um, you might want to have the ability to turn a single cylinder into a double cylinder um, under very particular installations. Um, code is very clear about the permissible use of a double cylinder. I believe it is single uh, dwelling units that have three or less people only can have a true double cylinder deadbolt. Um, if you have children at home, uh, you might want to be really sure the, the four-year-old can't get the front door open um, when you are distracted for 10 seconds. Uh, they, then they decide they want to take a walk to the park, um, and now your child is missing. Uh, so, you know, your life experiences will tell you whether or not captive thumb turn works for you. I know that it does for me. Uh, obviously a standard cylinder, an interchangeable core housing, but then after that, we can really add on to the conversation all of the stuff that I led the video with. High security, unusual keyways, repurposing old cylinders, etc. Now, how to build our part number, and this is going to very quickly get to uh, another very uh, favorite thing of mine. It's always going to be a 45, okay? Then after that, and we have a 45-1, so we've got a 45-1. We know it's a single cylinder. Our part number then has a 3 in it, and that's a 2 and 3 eighths back set. But check this out. They make a 2-inch back set. Okay, I can't think of anyone else who does in a auxiliary lock like this. Why is that cool? Well, that's cool because... You've, at your house, you've got a pair of two-foot doors that are 10 light, and there are four-inch styles, and all you want to do is lock those doors. And you call me, and I say, I've got the perfect solution. It'll be a Kaba deadbolt. That's a 45-1 or 2-2. Two, two. two inch, two and three-eighths, two and three-quarter. You can do drive-in bolts, or they're not mortised faceplates. Then you've got your strike option, heavy-duty, which this is an, uh, an 04 or you can do a standard strike. It's going to be a two and three quarter strike, but it won't include that heavy steel backer behind it. Then your finish. Our client opted for satin chrome, but these other finishes are available. Oil rubbed, satin brass, satin bronze, etc. Cylinder option. We've got a zero there in our part number, so there is no cylinder. After that, it doesn't matter. Cylinder size, number of pins, keyway, and keying no longer apply to us. Okay, so that's how you build this deadbolt. And then... All you have to do is get creative in terms of what you're doing if you are opting in other cylinders to accommodate keying requirements or unusual door thicknesses, okay? And, you know, I've done door thicknesses well over four inch, uh, maybe six inch in the past with epically long cylinders. It can all be accommodated is what I'm driving at, okay? Now, if we were to go back to our brass cylinder manual, which is here, this will allow us to take a tour of all things Kaba Ilko related. Suffice it to say that they're really known for mortise and rim cylinders. Cylinder related products is what I'm driving at. Um, in a variety of keyways, as you can see here, 
in a variety of finishes and a variety of thick uh, lengths for different thicknesses, options, etc. Now, Kaba Ilko is not going to make obviously every possible type of cylinder that you can get your hands on, but they do get you a really great offering of many standard products um, that you can use to great uh, to great effect to solve your problems. To back up a bit, we did not talk about how to machine the door, and I will be happy to work with you um, to get your door machined properly. I have ca I have personally machined tens of thousands of doors for every conceivable piece of hardware, and would be happy to walk you through how to prep the door for that. Back to the catalog, variations of tail pieces for mortise and rim cylinders, and it just goes on and on and on. That link to the manufacturer's page that I called your attention to earlier is a repository of encyclopedic documentation as well. Not only can you look at all the Kaba products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, the full catalog, encyclopedic documents, such as their key blank catalog, which is a which is an encyclo encyclopedia on its own, manuals when it comes to some of the keying, uh, the key cutting machines that they make, other supporting documentation is here. Let's finish up this video on camera. Now, for those several and many reasons that I had mentioned earlier, I'm very partial to Kaba Ilko. Um, the back set option of 2 inch, the modular nature of the cylinder possibilities, unusual door thicknesses, keying requirements, all of that backed by exceptional technical support. There's a particular gentleman in the cylinder department of Kaba Ilko who has been thoroughly helpful. And not only uh, my understanding and ultimate appreciation of the Kaba Ilko line, but, uh, but working with me in a way in which, you know, prepared me to understand locksmithing in general better and to even, in his own small way, help me better pass my certif uh, certified registered locksmith exam for Aloha. So very, to that gentleman, I say thank you. I'm very, very appreciative. Um, excellent quality material from them. And if you have any questions on the Kaba Ilko 45 series deadbolt, please do not hesitate to reach out. Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. Thank you.